So I'm not someone who's used to cooking every day by any stretch of the imagination. And since I'm just a few days away from starting the slow carb diet, I better come up with a realistic meal and cooking plan that I can actually stick to. Welcome to Get It Together, and if you're new here, this channel is just me trying to figure out how to get my life together and sharing the tips and lessons I learned along the way. So thanks for joining me, and as you gathered from the intro, I'm not a chef. Uh, I mean, I know how to cook-ish. Generally speaking, I don't cook at all, and um, with the slow carb diet, I want to make a change with that. I want to start being able to cook all of my meals, um, or at least make cooking the majority, as opposed to dining out. And uh, one of the most important things here is to keep things realistic. I mean, the slow carb diet itself is already going to be a very drastic shift from like just the disgusting eating habits that I'm already like used to making. Uh, and so having a plan, uh, a meal plan to be able to cook consistently, that's actually realistic. Um, and more importantly, uh, just quick, easy, and slow carb diet compliant is what's most important for me right now. So on page 72 of The 4-Hour Body by Tim Ferriss, he kind of gives like a, a nice broken down list of all of the food categories that are recommended on a slow carb diet. And because my goal here is to make it as easy uh, and quick as possible, the first thing I need to consider is limiting the sheer quantity of, of ingredients. And going through the book uh, a bit more, there are a few other finer points, uh, such as what I mentioned in, in a previous video, which is what Tim describes as common deficiencies in the slow carb diet, which include uh, potassium, magnesium, and calcium. And uh, the one whole food that uh, is possible to attain all of these um, is spinach. So I've kind of decided that um, in compliance with kind of rule number two, which is eating more or less the same meals all the time every day, um, spinach is going to be a part of every single meal uh, in this month-long experiment. So I'll toss up some numbers on the screen right now. And uh, in the book, basically the three deficiencies again are potassium, magnesium, and calcium. And so for potassium, the daily recommended number is 4,700 milligrams, and that's 5.6 cups of spinach. And for magnesium, it's 400 milligrams, and that's 2.5 cups of spinach. And for calcium, it's 1,000 milligrams, which is 4.1 cups of spinach. And so looking at these numbers, um, because spinach is what I've decided on, we'll only be dealing with spinach here. As long as I have 5.6 cups of spinach, I'm gonna be hitting the daily required amounts of these typical deficiencies. So how am I gonna hit these numbers? I'm basically gonna be buying spinach from Costco, and every box of spinach from Costco is 312 grams. And for easy math, I'm just gonna round it down to 300 grams. But uh, According to the FDA, when it comes to raw spinach, every cup is 30 grams. So if there's 300 grams in a pack of spinach, then there's 10 cups. And so basically every day, if I have half a pack of that spinach, then I will have had five cups. So that's my plan there. Basically one of the ways I'm gonna be able to reduce the sheer number of ingredients. Because in the book, um, there's also the recommendation to consider supplements for potassium, magnesium, and calcium. And um, that just doesn't kind of work for me. On the one side, I have to spend money, extra money on, on supplements. And on the other side, I have to remember to take them. And that's just making things a little bit more complicated. So now that that's out of the way, what are my meals going to be? Uh, of the five core rules of the slow carb diet, rule number two is to have more or less the same meals all the time every day. And again, as I mentioned several times, I'm not a chef. So I just wanna make this as easy as possible for me. So how am I gonna do it? I'm gonna have the exact same base for all of my meals. Every single one of my meals is gonna have the same base. When I say, say base, I, I mean black beans. So I got that covered and as we know, I'm gonna be having half a box of that Costco spinach every day. So I have my vegetables covered, which means that basically all I have to now do is cover my proteins for, for, uh, for all of my meals. So what I'm gonna have for breakfast in terms of protein, uh, I'm gonna be having four organic eggs. I'm not like this, person that's, that's like obsessed with organic only by any stretch of the imagination. But I don't know the scientific reasoning, but as listed in um, the, slow, the slow carb diet portion of the four hour body, um, it says specifically for eggs, um, if they're organic, you can have two to five whole eggs. If they're not organic, then to use egg whites and uh, to add two eggs with their yolk just for, for the purposes of flavor. In line with kind of the whole supplement deal, I don't want to have to remember to buy like cartons of egg whites and then while I'm cooking to have to measure it. So just straight up for the ease of limiting ingredients, I'm just gonna be using organic eggs. The reason I chose four eggs, by the way, is because um, for maximum efficacy on the slow carb diet, the aim is to have um, at least 30 grams of protein within 30 minutes of waking up. 
And uh, I just think that this is the easiest way to do it. Uh, according to the nutritional information on the, uh, the Costco packages of organic eggs, it's seven grams of protein per egg. So four eggs is 28 grams, and black beans have quite a bit of protein in them as well. So you know the two missing grams from the eggs, I'll definitely be able to make up easily with the, with the black beans that I'll be having for breakfast. For both lunch and dinner, I'm gonna be doing a combination or just stacking chicken breast and salmon fillets. So I might have chicken breast for both lunch and dinner one day and then salmon for both lunch and dinner the other day or alternate them, whatever. That part's not important, but what is important is I'm gonna be grilling both of them. This also goes to trying to make this as easy and compliant as possible for me. I'm not really used to cooking chicken or salmon and uh, the times I do, it's just on the barbecue. Not that I'm gonna fire, fire up a barbecue, I'm gonna be using like an indoor grill. But the main reason is because I was Googling chicken breast recipes and most of what I saw were like to pan fry it and then to put it in the oven for a while and that's just already too many moving pieces for me. So uh, I'm just going to be grilling them with kind of like a, you know, like a, a sandwich grill. Um, and that's, that's just the way that I'm able to identify to make it as easy with as few steps as possible. So to summarize, if you're anything like me and you're not a wizard in the kitchen and you're not used to like literally the habit of cooking all the time, I think I have a pretty good meal plan here. And just to kind of recap everything, breakfast is going to be four eggs uh, fried or scrambled on my black beans and spinach on the side. My lunch is going to be a black beans and spinach with a chicken breast. And my dinner will be a salmon filet with also black beans and spinach. And you know, like I said, I might do one day where lunch and dinner is chicken and the next day where lunch and dinner are salmon. That I'm not too worried about. By the way, one of the reasons why I think the slow carb diet is gonna be something that I can definitely stick to is because there's no like calorie counting or anything. On the bottom of page 72 after that list of recommended foods, um, the direct quote from the book is, eat as much of these foods as you w would like. Just keep it simple. This means if I'm still hungry like a couple of hours after dinner and like I, I just, I have to eat something, I can just, you know, grill up another chicken breast or I can, you know, have a few spoonfuls of black beans and I don't have to worry about that. It's still all going to be compliant to the slow carb diet. Now I have a couple of questions for all of you. Um, for those of you who are nutritionists or dietitians, are there any glaring errors uh, in, in my meal plan, especially errors that could potentially cause like long-term uh, health effects or negative health effects rather? And for those of you who are considering trying out this low carb diet, does this meal plan seem like something that you guys could follow? Personally, I'm low-key excited. I mean, I'm filming this right now on a Wednesday and I'm gonna be starting day one of the slow carb diet for my month-long experiment on Sunday. Just a reminder that I would love your help, if you're willing, to make me stay accountable. And what I've done is I'm putting up $100 uh, for any failure. And in order to track it, basically I have to put up a picture or a video uh, to a new Instagram account I created, at GitVlog. Uh, and I'm just gonna be using the highlights or the stories or whatever it is, something that's gonna be able to track my uploads of breakfast, lunch, dinner, and any other meals that I feel uh, I need uh, throughout this 30-day experiment. If I fail to post, uh, the first person that calls me out gets $100. It's just as simple as that. If you're interested in trying out the slow carb diet and want to read all the finer details, you should definitely pick up a copy of The 4 Hour Body. There's a link for it in the description below. And if you got value out of this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Cool.